In this video, I'm going to show you how to adjust the audio settings when the system is set up in its standard mode on your Pioneer EX in-dash receiver. Even though your particular in-dash receiver may have buttons on the side or across the bottom like this one, the on-screen operation in this demonstration is identical for the following Pioneer EX models. AVH500EX AVH501EX AVH600EX AVH601EX Now I have powered up this head unit for the first time and uh, here are a couple of things that you'll see only on the first time that you power up the head unit. The first question you'll see here in the setup uh, menu is what language do you want? You can choose any language that you want here. I'm going to choose English and I'm going to say OK to advance. Now the next question that we see is what type of speaker mode settings do we want? Do we want network mode over here or do we want standard mode over here? Now in this video I'm going to set up the audio system as standard mode and what standard mode means is the RCA outputs will be set up as front, rear, and subwoofer output. So three sets of RCAs and they are front, rear, and subwoofer output. Now there's a complete uh, separate video for network mode and if you choose network mode the RCA outputs are entirely different. They change to high, mid, and low. High, mid, and low in network mode front, rear, and sub in standard mode. Now this also affects the speaker level outputs. The speaker level outputs on uh, standard mode are front and rear output, front and rear on speaker level outputs on standard. If you choose network mode, the speaker level outputs become high and mid or high and bandpass. So in this video, we're working with standard mode. Once I've chosen standard mode, I'm gonna select OK. And you can say OK to the warning here, but after a few seconds, it will automatically go away. Now I'm just going to choose a source, and in this case, I'm going to choose the AM FM radio source. That switches on. That's going to come up with volume. You can turn the volume down, choose a radio station, whatever you do. I'm going to turn the volume down here so we don't have a bunch of noise in the background. Next thing I'm going to do here is touch the gears, and I want to go to the speaker. This is my audio settings. Uh, first up, we see the graphic EQ settings. Now there's a full video that tells you how to use the graphic EQ uh, for this head unit. Be sure to check out the full graphic EQ video. We'll go back up. Next up is our fader and balance control. Now we're in the uh, standard mode and so we get fade and balance control. Uh, fade is front to rear and we can use the buttons to go front to rear here. Uh, balance is right to left. We can also just touch the screen and drag this around wherever we want it to go. Once you've made your adjustments for fade and balance control, we'll go back up. Next up is our mute level, and we have a couple of different settings for the mute level. Right now our mute level is set to attenuate. We'll open the window here. We can choose attenuate, mute, or off. Now this means that when I get a phone call, or when I get turn-by-turn -turn instruction from the navigation system, the uh, audio system will uh, first attenuate, and that means it will drop the volume of whatever music is playing by about 20 dB, and you will hear the uh, telephone call, or you will hear the turn-by-turn -turn instruction from the navigation system. If I choose mute, this will completely mute the music that's being played back on a phone call or, f or when we hear from the navigation system. And if you don't want anything to happen at all, you can choose to switch this off. And that way when you get a phone call, whatever music is playing, it will continue to play in the background. Or when you get turn-by-turn -turn instruction, that music will continue to play at whatever volume you have set. Uh, for my system, I'm going to choose to mute the, the uh, audio system when there's a phone call or when there is turn-by-turn -turn instruction from the nav system. Next up is my source level adjuster and you can see that that's grayed out. Now that's grayed out because we're on the AM FM radio source. So if I'm going to get to source level adjuster we need to switch our source. So we'll just touch the home button here and I'll choose the CD source and I'm going to go back into my settings here and the audio settings and you can see the source level adjuster now becomes available. Let's open that. 
So I chose the CD source, and you can see that that's listed at the top here. And with source level adjuster, I can make any given source a little bit louder or a little bit quieter as compared to FM. So you see we have the level of FM radio right here, and if the CD isn't as loud as FM, I can make the CD a little bit louder. Or if the CD is louder than FM, I can make the CD a little bit quieter. So this is used so that when I switch between sources, I don't have a big jump in volume from one source to the next. Now all sources are compared to FM and so when the FM source, AM FM source is selected the source level adjuster is not available. Let's go back up. Next up we have our subwoofer control. But let's drag this down a little here so we can see what we're working with. Next up is our subwoofer control and right now the subwoofer is switched off. We can choose to switch it on or off right here. Now please note when I have the subwoofer switched off my subwoofer settings are grayed out. When I switch the subwoofer on, now the subwoofer settings become available. Next up is my speaker level. And here I have a uh, adjustment for each individual speaker in the system. Since we're set up here in the, uh, in the standard mode, I have front speakers, rear speakers, and a subwoofer output. So front, rear, and sub. Now I can make uh, any given speaker louder or quieter as compared to the other speakers. So for example, I can make the front left speaker a little quieter, 1 dB down or 2 dB down. I can do the same thing with the subwoofer, for example. I can make it a little quieter or a little louder. Now for best audio quality, be sure to keep each of these settings at zero or lower. So rather than boost up the volume of one speaker, lower the volume of other speakers to compensate. Now let's go back up. Next up is our crossover settings, and we will enter the crossover settings here. Now since we're set up in the standard mode, our crossover uh, options are front, rear, and subwoofer output. Right now we're on the front crossover, but you can see the high pass filter is switched off. We can switch the high pass filter on, and I have uh, options to change my high pass filter all the way from 25 hertz all the way up to 250 hertz. And on any of those given settings, I can change the slope of the crossover from 6 all the way down to 24 dB per octave. Now if I hit the arrow over, I can go to my rear settings, and the high pass filter is switched off on the rear settings. We can switch it on, and here I have the same crossover points available, all the way from 25 hertz up to 250 hertz. So I'm going to make the rear crossover setting a little different than the front crossover setting. I'm going to cross it over in this example at 100 hertz, and I have slope settings from 6 all the way to 24 dB per octave, and that can be set completely independent of the front crossovers. Hit the arrow over again here. We go to the subwoofer crossover, and previously we had switched the subwoofer on, so the low pass filter is on. Crossover points on the subwoofer are again are from 25 hertz all the way up to 250 hertz. In this case, we'll make the crossover subwoofer uh, or the, the crossover for the subwoofer at 31 and a half, and my cross my slope settings are from six all the way through 36 dB per octave for the subwoofer output. Please note that I can also change the phase of the subwoofer output here from normal to a reverse phase. Be sure to check the normal and the reverse phase in your particular vehicle. One may sound significantly better than the other. We'll go back up and let's roll along here to our listening position. Right now the listening position is switched off and you can see position here is grayed out so we can't get to it. And here you can see the listening position is switched off so let's choose a setting for right now we'll choose front and the listening position will help to focus the stereo image in any given area of the vehicle. So if I want to focus the stereo image to the driver's position or to the passenger's position, to all front positions or for all listeners in the car, you can choose that here. Let's go back up. Now let's take a look at our time alignment settings. With time alignment, we have time alignment switched on right now, but you can see that our time alignment settings are grayed out. When we try to touch one, it tells us that time alignment can only be adjusted if the listening position is set to one of the front positions. So let's set the time alignment, uh, the listening position, to one of the front positions. 
There we go. Now we're on front left, the driver's side, and you can see we can make adjustments to each of the time alignment settings. And this is the distance uh, from your ear to any given speaker, the front uh, left speaker, the rear left speaker, front right and rear right. Now, if you want to make those speakers appear to be a little further away or a little closer, you can make an adjustment by inch uh, to the time alignment settings. And this will digitally delay or digitally move closer any speaker in the system. When you're done making your time alignment settings, we'll go back up. Next up is auto EQ, which right now is switched off and our measurement for auto EQ. For more information about using the auto EQ system and the CDMC20 microphone from Pioneer, check out the auto EQ video. Let's roll down a little here where we can save our settings. Do you want to save all of your sound settings that you made? Sure, we'll save. So when we see sound settings saved, we can touch the screen. And our next setting that we can take a look at is to load the settings. Here are our initial settings and the sound settings that we saved. So if I go back in and change uh, my settings, I can come back and come back to my preset that I had made initially. And of course, I have my auto EQ settings are available in here. And if I have the optional iDatalink Maestro uh, RR uh, connected to the system, my car settings will be available here. Let's go back up. Next up is our bass boost control, and here we can add a little more bottom into the system up to uh, a plus six, or we can take that back down to a zero. And let's see, we'll scroll down here. Next up is our rear speaker output. You can see that the rear speaker output is grayed out. We can't get to it. The only way we can change the rear speaker output is if the system is switched off. The audio source is switched off. So uh, let's just go out to our AV sources here and we will choose to switch the source off. Now let's go back into our settings and our audio settings and we'll scroll down here and here's our rear speaker output that we can change the rear speaker level output to a subwoofer output or we can change it back to full range rear output. For right now we're gonna leave that as the full range rear output and I'm gonna go back out and choose an audio source and we'll go back into the audio settings now and scroll down. Next up is our loudness control, and right now loudness is switched off. Loudness is often used to help low volume uh, audio sound a little more lifelike. You can choose the setting here that works best for you. I'll choose the low setting for right now. Next up is our automatic level control, and we have three settings for automatic level, off, mode one, and mode two. Automatic level control will listen to your uh, compressed audio files and Bluetooth audio files and automatically adjust for that volume. So if the volume is particularly loud on one file and particularly more quiet on another file, you can use mode one or mode two of automatic level control to help balance that out and to compress the dynamic range of any given track. So for right now, I'm going to leave that switched on to mode number one. And finally, here is Advanced Sound Retriever. And Advanced Sound Retriever also has three settings, off, mode one, and mode two. Now, Advanced Sound Retriever can help your compressed audio files sound a little more like CD audio quality. Advanced Sound Retriever works on anything that is played through USB, anything that is played through Bluetooth audio, and anything that is played through a, uh, a CD disc. So you can try mode number one or mode number two, choose the one that works best for you, or you can switch uh, advanced sound retriever off. When you're done making your audio adjustments, you can just hit the X to escape.